This video is to go over the reading discoveries in space, specifically the reading comprehension questions, so we can examine the text to find out where we find the evidence to help us answer the questions. So we're going to do a series of videos, one for each question. So we'll start with question number one. Question number one asks, what are Voyager 1 and 2? Well, one thing that I know is that reading comprehension questions tend to go in sequence, so I'm going to go back to the beginning of the reading, and I'll start skimming. Our solar system is filled with mysteries that scientists don't understand. To learn more, they send out spacecraft to gather information. In 1977, two space probes, Voyager 1 and 2, were launched. Well, I'm lucky that's directly answered in the text. So I'm going to take my highlighter. It's going to say two space probes, Voyager 1 and 2. I'm going to make a little note for myself that that was question number one. And now I'll come back to the text here. What are Voyager 1 and 2? They are two space probes. So here's my answer. That one's easy. OK, question number two. What is an inference you can make based on information in paragraph four? Well, the first thing that I need to notice is that the question says, what is an inference? As soon as I see that the question is an inference, I know I'm not going to find a sentence with the answer. It's not going to be directly stated. I'm going to be looking for clues. So I'll make a little note for myself. Look for clues. That's what I'm going to highlight in my text. So let me look for the inference and see if I can find clues to support it. A, sulfur is a colorless substance. B, sulfur causes the bad smell and rotten eggs. C, sulfur is not found on Earth. So I need to find clues that's going to support one of these answers. So I'm going to go back to the reading and scan through it because I'm looking for something specific. I'm looking specifically for where it talks about sulfur. And if I move rapidly through this page here, which I know I'm going to do much faster, but to save us some time for the video, it's not on page one of the reading. So I need to look at page two of the reading. And here we go. Materials from the eruptions quickly freeze. The frozen material spreads out like great umbrellas above the ground. Then it falls as a strange sort of snow. Here's sulfur. Okay, so there's what I'm looking for. Here's sulfur. It says, sulfur, a yellow substance, erupts from the volcanoes. Okay, I'm going to change blue because some of us, we make that connection to blues clues and looking for clues. So it says, sulfur is a yellow substance that erupts from the volcanoes. Now I'm going to remember from the question, sulfur is a colorless substance. That's not true. Sulfur is yellow. So I'll, make the, I'll eliminate that choice. Not true, sulfur is yellow. So I can eliminate that choice. It is not A. Okay, let's go back. As the sulfur cools, it creates patches of yellow, red, orange, and black on Io's surface. There's another evidence that it's not colorless, it has color. Some of the sulfur turns to white frost. With all this sulfur present, Io might have a strong smell of rotten eggs. Okay. With all this sulfur present, Io might have a strong smell of rotten eggs. If I go back to my question here, sulfur causes the bad smell in rotten eggs. Well, I definitely have a clue here that supports that. But let me check the other answer if I want to be sure. Sulfur is not found on Earth. Well, it doesn't say anything here that tells me it is or isn't found on the planet. So what I will note to myself here is
for letter C, there's no evidence either way. Now, what I know from my experience as an adult is sulfur is found on Earth. Sulfur is one of the elements on the periodic table. Sulfur is usually what's at the head of a matchstick that causes it to uh, light up. So I would either know from my background knowledge that sulfur is not, it, that sulfur is found on Earth, or I would see that there isn't any clues in the text um, to support it. So letter B is my best answer. And this is... These are the clues that I used to help me to answer number two. Question three. What can you infer about Io's ground waves? All right, so I'm looking at this question, and I see it's another inference question. It says infer, and I'm looking at Io's ground waves. Io has oceans of water with violent waves. Io's oceans are smaller than Earth's oceans. The ground on Io acts like a rough ocean. All right, back to my text. Okay, I've been going in sequence so far. Another interesting feature of Io is that the ground is always moving. It rises and falls the way ocean waves do. Okay, so that's a clue for me. Ground rises and falls the way ocean waves do. Io's ground waves are five times the height of our ocean waves. Without a doubt, Io is a radical place. All right, so let me go back to my questions. Io has oceans of water. doesn't say anything about water. Io's oceans are smaller than Earth's oceans. And again, my question says ground waves, and all of these are about oceans, so they're really not good answers. The ground on Io acts like a rough ocean. Absolutely, that's the best answer. Come back to my text. And this is my clue to find the answer for question three. Okay. Question four. What information about Io surprised scientists? A, its age and distance from the sun. B, its size compared to Jupiter's other moons. C, its temperatures and volcanic activity. Okay, so this question, I'm not sure if it's going to be an inference question or specific details. There isn't any language here that clues me in that I'm looking at an inference. But a key word that I'm looking at is what surprised scientists. So I'm looking for that. Let me go back to my text. Okay, we've been dealing in sequence, so we're starting in a new section here, hot spot in the solar system. Io has more volcanic activity than any other place in the solar system. It has between 500 and 700 volcanoes. As many as 300 may be active at the same time. Okay, I don't have anything about surprising yet, but I do seem to be talking about volcanoes, which connects to this idea here, volcanic activity. So... I'm leaning towards that answer right now. Okay, moving down to the text. Although Io's surface is below freezing, the temperatures in its volcanoes can reach 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So now I'm talking about temperatures. Only the sun has hotter temperatures. All right, that's another clue. That's a hot temperature. It says hotter temperatures. Scientists aren't sure why the volcanoes are so hot. Scientists aren't sure. So I have been leaning towards this one. It's temperatures and volcanic activity. Aren't sure, close to surprise. I think that's enough evidence for me so far. I haven't seen anything about age and distance. The whole topic seems to be about hot spots. So I really think that C is going to be my correct answer. Go back to my text and mark my clues. Okay, and you see I have a bunch of different things together here to help me to find this answer. This is question four, question four, 
Question four. Okay, very good. Question number five. Based on what you know about the needs of living things, which is an inference you can make? Okay, two clues in the question that are going to help me. Right, a, right away, I know I have to make an inference, but it's also telling me based on what you know about the needs of living things. Okay, so what do I know about living things? What is it that living things need? Okay, so I've got to use that part of my background knowledge, the needs of living things, to help me to answer the question. A, the warm temperatures on Io could support life. B, if there was water and oxygen on Io, humans could survive there. C, humans and other living things could not survive on Io. Okay, so these two questions say that Io could support life. This one says it could not. So I'm going to try to eliminate my choices just based on that. Can it or can it not support life? So let's see. We read here before that there's 3,000 degree Fahrenheit volcanoes. The volcanoes on Io are more than just hot. They are violent and eruptions are sudden. When a volcano on Io erupts, it shoots dark columns of gas and smoke 150 miles into space. Okay. Shoots dark columns of gas and smoke. The volcano pours out rivers of sizzling lava. Lava may flow for hundreds of miles. Okay, so I've got these things about the temperatures. I've got this about the smoke and gas. Well, what do I know? Based on what I know, smoke and gas is going to make it hard to breathe. So I'm thinking it cannot support life. So let me take some notes on my evidence here. Okay, I know too much smoke and gas. Make it hard to breathe. I also know, that's his breath, breathe. When volcanoes erupt on Earth, they can be deadly. So, based on these things of what I know and my clue back in the text, my best answer is going to be letter C. Humans and other living things could not survive on Isle. So, there's my background knowledge that's part of the help. Plus, these clues here. Okay, five here, five here. I may even put another five up here about the temperatures. So those clues plus my background knowledge help me to choose C as the best answer. Question number six. Which of the following helps you to infer that Io is younger than Earth? Okay, another inference. Here it is. Io is younger than Earth. That's what I'm trying to support. Evidence for this. Let me look at my choices. Io is a moon, whereas Earth is a planet. Now, some people may not know that word. Whereas, it's just another comparison word. So putting things side by side. Io is a moon, Earth is a planet. Earth's volcanoes are cooler than Io's volcanoes. The sun is hotter than Earth's volcanoes and Io's volcanoes. Okay. When I look at A, Io is a moon, whereas Earth is a planet. I don't know if any of those details are going to help me to talk about whether one is younger or one is older. So for me, right away, I'm going to eliminate choice A. But I need to go back to my text anyway. All right, back here, here's where I see something about age. It is a very young moon. 
That looks like that might help me. It is a very young moon. Billions of years ago, volcanoes on Earth were that hot. Okay, so that's bringing me back to this where it talked about that 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit where I was answering questions for. It is a very young moon. Billions of years ago, volcanoes on Earth were that hot. Over the years, Earth has cooled down. Today, the hottest volcanoes on Earth reach temperatures of only about 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so this is cooler. Earth's volcanoes are cooler. Io's volcanoes are hotter. It says it was hotter. Earth was that hot when it was younger. All right, I may need to write some of this down so I don't get too confused. Io is young. Maybe we'll put it on the question page. Okay, Io is young. Its volcanoes are hot. Earth's volcanoes used to be that hot. They got cooler as Earth got older. So I have those four things that I'm putting together. Io is young. Its volcanoes are hot. That's the wrong its. Its volcanoes are hot. Earth's volcanoes used to be that hot. They got cooler as Earth got older. So to me, I didn't see anything that talked about the sun. So even if I couldn't use those clues to make an inference by process of elimination or by putting those clues together, I'm going to come up with letter B. Earth's volcanoes are cooler than Io's volcanoes. A lot of work to put that together, a lot of clues. You have to work hard for that one. If you try to rush through this question, it's very easy to pick the wrong answer or to just blow it off and say, oh, I don't know. But the clues are there. You just have to look for them. Question number seven. We're going into the home stretch here. Last page of questions. Which of the following statements from the passage helps you to infer that Io's volcanoes can erupt one after another. Okay, so I know I've got an inference. It says infer. What I'm looking to support is that Io's volcanoes can erupt one after another. Believe it or not, this is an easier question because it's giving you evidence here. You don't really need to go back into the text at all. You're just going to look which choice, A, B, or C, shows that volcanoes can erupt one after another. So, Let's see, process of elimination for me. Scientists aren't sure why the volcanoes are so hot. Well, this statement says one erupts after another. This is only talking about all volcanoes, not one after another. So I don't think it's A. Nearby, another sleeping volcano soon comes to life. Well, here's the word that seems like it's important to me. Another sleeping volcano. So one volcano and another volcano soon comes to life. Then the wild eruptions begin again. This looks like it's going to be my answer, but I want to check choice C just to be sure. Pressure builds. Finally, the melted matter explodes out of the ground in volcanic eruptions. That's talking about what happens to cause an eruption. This doesn't work. So I was right. Letter B is going to be my answer. Question number eight. What causes the unusual volcanic activity on Io? Okay, I'm going to be hopeful here. It says what causes. Maybe that'll be directly stated. I'm not seeing anything in the text that's going to make me think I have to make an inference. So let me go back to the text. All right, starting a new section. A tug of war in space. Why does this volcanic activity occur on Io? Well, there's the question right there that I'm looking to answer. So maybe I'll keep my fingers crossed. It'll be answered right after this. Scientists have worked hard to answer that question. They have learned that Io is the weakest player in a game of tug of war with its nearest neighbors. 
Jupiter and its other three moons are all much larger than Io. The gravity from each of these big neighbors pulls on Io. So it's saying the gravity causes it. The gravity from each of the neighbors, Jupiter pulls from one side. Its large moons pull from the other. These strong forces make Io bulge and stretch. It also wobbles on its axis. Because of the opposing forces, heat builds up inside the moon. The heat melts matter in the middle of Io. Pressure builds. Finally, the melted matter explodes out of the ground in volcanic eruptions. Wow, so it's a lot of text. Here's the volcanic eruptions. The strong forces from the gravity. Heat builds up inside the moon. These are almost steps in a sequence. So all of these things are my clues that I'm going to use to answer question number eight. And then I'll go back and check. So I'm going to put an eight here and here and here. There's a lot of information to use as clues, but I'm going to put it together. What causes the unusual volcanic activity, the pull of Jupiter and its large moons? Well, it certainly seems like it's that answer. But let's check my others. The unusually high amount of sulfur. It doesn't talk anything about sulfur at all. I'm going to eliminate choice B. Heat from the giant planet Jupiter that Io orbits. It doesn't say heat from the giant planet. It talks about gravity. So that's not correct. So I want to say this is wrong because it's the gravity, not the heat. So I've confirmed it. A is my best answer. And I have all of this evidence in the text that helps to support it. Question number nine, which causes Io to have the shape of a football? Okay, here's another question asking about causes. And I don't see the word infer. So I'm hoping it will be directly answered. Causes, Io to have the shape of a football. Going back to my text, there may be things that I actually highlighted already that help me to answer. All right, I remember saying strong forces make Io bulge and stretch. Io gets pulled so hard in opposite directions that sometimes it stretches into the shape of a football. There it is, right here. That's question number nine. There's nine here. And it says these strong forces. I just need to know that these strong forces mean gravity. So going back to my answers. Lost it there for a minute. This causes Io to have the shape of a football. Materials from its eruptions. That's not correct. The great difference in temperature. No, we know it's not temperature. We know it's gravity. Io gets pulled in opposite directions by Jupiter and the other moons. Letter C is the correct answer. And we found that in the text here. Pulled so hard, strong forces make Io bulge and stretch. Okay, we made it to the last question, question 10. What can you infer, or why can you infer that the activity on Io will never stop? Okay, so I know it's an inference question. It says infer, I'm looking for clues. Infer. Because Io's position in the solar system will most likely not change because the temperature on Io will stay the same for billions of years because the presence of sulfur will always stay the same. Well, I need to remind myself what type of activity I'm talking about here. We've been talking about volcanoes, so that's volcanic activity. I'll go back to my reading. This violent game goes on and on because the pull of neighbors never stops, neither do the eruptions. Trapped in a strange type of war, Io is doomed to an explosive fight for a long, long time. So here it is right here, because, because the pull 
Ohio's neighbors never stops, neither do the eruptions. I know that eruptions is volcanoes. So that's volcanic activity. That's going to be my clue that I use. Here's question 10. Right here. Okay, so it's not the temperature and it's not sulfur. Okay, it's the pull between the two, so that's location. So I'm eliminating B. There's no talk about sulfur at all. Io's position in the solar system. That's what makes the gravity pull. So A is the best answer. And I finished the reading and all 10 questions.